Listen, to me, I think the most important thing that happened last night was Villanova looking like Villanova. And maybe it took Marquette. Uh, but, but again, listen, they've struggled against, you know, Georgetown, Seton Hall. They lost to the Johnnies. So, like, I think, for me, I still have confidence Villanova there as that number three team come NCAA tournament. They have their long pause, so hopefully they won't have to go through anything again. Um, and, and I think ultimately they still have that 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 DNA that I I, I value and I trust when, when March starts. So to me, when they're blowing teams out like that, it shows me that they're clicking again, that they're, they're, their legs are back. Um, everything's kind of back to normal for Villanova. So I think that was, to me, the most important thing that happened last night. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, it was nice to see them finally make some shots. You know, it was nice to see a lot of shots. Uh, Jeremiah Robinson Earl kind of come out here and just completely dominate a game. Uh, same with Colin Gillespie. The only thing that I'll say is this. Uh, it's Marquette. I, I get it. Well, Dawson Garcia like- and DJ Carton are both talented dudes. I'm not I'm not discounting Marquette's been bad, but their talent level isn't bad, Rob. It's not. DJ Carton is a – listen, talent-wise, he might be the second best player on the court last night, and Dawson Garcia might be the third or fourth best. Well, here's here's the thing you got to remember about DJ. Um, I'm trying to think of what's the diplomatic way to put this. Uh, go look at Ohio State's record before and after he I'm left. I'm not – agreed. Right agreed. He's had some mental health issues. Um, yes, I, I, I think, again, um, Marquette is not a team that – listen, a lot of people are saying at this point their fan base is, is had it with Woja. And, you know, people got to remember Marquette is a program – that has so much tradition, so much history, so many resources, Rob. Well, that's, that's the thing. thing. I don't think people realize right. how much money Marquette has for their basketball department and for their athletic program. They're, they are the most well-financed basketball program in the Big East, correct? Right. Yes. And it's not really close, correct? As of, as of at least a year or so ago, and I don't think anything's changed. I mean, again, with cuts and everything, you don't know how everything's affected. But, but yeah, I mean – Listen, Bojo really hasn't done anything, you know, like he has not done enough. And I, I would think he would be the first one to admit that, um, that he hasn't done enough. And right now you're talking about a team that is five and nine in a big East that isn't very good. I mean, they're looking up at Butler and Providence and St. John's and UConn who hasn't played with James Booknight for, for the, a lot of the beast slate. I mean, that's not good. If you're Wojo, I don't think he'll get, Something will happen after this year, but I think he squarely goes in next year on the hot seat. Yeah. Um, so do you remember last season when Marquette went to Villanova and they had uh, they they lost 72 to 71? It was one of those games where like um they kind it looked like they kind of had a chance to win it. Like Marcus Howard didn't play great. I think he had like 24 in that game. Yeah. Um and uh, they only lost by one, but it felt like Villanova was kind of in control for that whole game. Okay. Well, since, I don't that, since that loss, yeah, uh, they finished last season losing six of their last seven games. Yeah, they're now five and nine in the Big East this year, which means since that Villanova loss, they've gone, they've won just six of their last twenty-one Big East games. Wow, they are nine and eleven overall this season. Um, they don't really have like. I guess losing at home to DePaul is, is not a great loss, but that I mean, that's the worst loss that they've taken this season. So a Big East team that that arguably has um, a similar level of talent to them, like Big East, the, the DePaul, they're, 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 it's not like they don't have talent. That's that's not the issue on this. this I mean, this is year seven for Wojo. Year seven, they've been in the tournament twice and and have been knocked seven. Out this is time. year seven for Wojo. Wow, right three. Yeah, yeah, this is year seven. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, they've been to the tournament uh, twice. Well, yeah, twice, but they would have they would have made it last year. So it would have been close, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't like they 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 kind of limped in. If you remember, they limped well, in. They lost six of the last seven games. So right. eighteen and twelve overall. Like they would have gotten in, but they might have been a first four, or like a twelve seed or something like that, and probably got knocked out in the first round again. So you know, if you're Marquette again, you're not. You're not happy with this. You're just you're not happy, and the fans are not happy. And 
you know, something's got to change there. Um, I, I didn't mean this to be a full, you know, Marquette uh, podcast here at the beginning, but no, it's, uh, it's one of the more, to me, that's one of the more interesting storylines in that conference because sure. you, you expect that program to be better based off of, again, the money that they have and the tradition that they have, and they, they're just not right. Yeah. And at some point um, that's going to, that's going to catch up to Wojo. Um, so at this point, uh, like, are are you are you ready to call Villanova the third best team in the in, in the country, or are you still? I was ready a month ago. I was ready when they were still on pause, Rob. I, I never lost faith. I, I just felt like it was going to take time to be able to say like they're there again. But I had no I no doubt that they would get there. And, and to me now, they're they're probably there, or pretty darn close to it. And my take is, Rob, if 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 you're putting Villanova against Ohio State in a 10-game series, if you're putting them against Illinois in a 10-game series, if you're putting them against whoever you want, who's your – I mean, Michigan in a 10-game series, who are you taking to win the majority of those games? Um, probably Villanova. There you um, go. Yeah, probably Villanova. Right. But it's also like I feel like I am a little bit biased there just because of the success, the success that Jay Wright has had in the past. It's the same – it's like he's right. kind of reached the level of – of Tom Izzo. Remember how Tom Izzo, when there was that stretch where he made a final, like every single player that graduated and played four years yeah. made a final four for yeah. Um, It kind of got to the point where it's like, well, why, why would you ever bet against Tom Izzo in March? Like he always gets it done. And, and That's right. um, yep. Jay Wright is, is kind of verging on that territory a little bit, but it, I mean, justifiably so they have a all American at the point. They have an all American at the five and we have a whole bunch of wings that can do a job. You know, they're doing yeah. yeah. Jeremiah uh, Jermaine Samuels is the perfect foreman for the system they want to play. Justin Moore is one of the most underrated sophomores in the country. Caleb Daniels can play. Um, we still haven't even seen like Brian Antoine. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Yeah, I'm um, just all in. I'm all in on Villanova being the third best team. I don't know what their odds are to win the whole thing. I would not probably not take them, but well, but uh, but why not? Bing, there you that go. Was Fanta, that, blame that one on Fanta. Unbelievable, unbelievable, John Fanta. Well, he's you know what he's three doing? He's just trying to get back at us because I was texting him last night when he was actually on TV. He's got three him. games. He's doing the G League. Uh, is he doing TV for the G League games today? Three of them. Imagine that. Yeah. Man, so uh, Villanova is is yeah. plus nine hundred according to our friends over at Bet Rivers right now to win the national. Not bad. I mean, I don't um, take it. I don't know if I put money on anybody other than Gonzaga and Baylor, but I, I would this year just because I think something could go wrong. That's the only reason I mean, we're why looking we're at it right now. Baylor shut down for still another week and a half. Right. We have no idea how they're going to come back. Like Michigan, Michigan's going to come back quicker. You know, and again, the timing now for Villanova, the timing, I mean, it was a long layoff, 27 days, but the timing was probably, you know, the best it could have been in a way, right? They'd already won enough games. You know, you got plenty of time to get back. Baylor should have that too. I mean, you're talking about getting back like, Mid February, you know, your first tournament game is until mid March. You'll be fine. It's the teams that are going to get hit like March 1st. If you have a shutdown at the end of February or early March, to me, then you're in trouble. Then you're in well, trouble. I mean, we're, we're butting right up against the end of February right now with, with Baylor, right? They're, yeah, they'll they're, be back they're all the way through February. They'll be back on like the 20th or so like that gives them again it it's doesn't also, matter it's also i think it's very different in texas the way that shutdowns are going to operate than what's yeah. happening in the michigan sure. athletic department where everybody's being like where they were stuck in hotel rooms or or, or dorm rooms or whatever it was yes. for two weeks uh in texas they they do things a little bit differently there was there was a packed house of maskless fans at uh at, at in lubbock the other night so 